Okay, so in this video, what we're gonna do is take a look at the spline wrap deformer. Uh, very useful for modeling things like ribbons, also animating, uh, and so we will see some of its uses as well as some things to try to avoid. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, we're gonna start by going into a top view to create a pen tool path for this. So uh, going to select the pen tool and I'm just gonna draw a simple shape out. I'm not even converting um, the points here because I can do it after the fact a little bit quicker. So I just hit escape now, select all my points with control A and then switch the interpolation to soft. You can see we get our shape. Don't want that point though. And if I want to adjust any of the points, I need to make sure I select a single point and I'm in the move tool. So I may do that just a little bit. So yeah, something like that. All right, can switch back to our perspective view. And now what I'm gonna do is create the ribbon itself by going to um, my geometry and creating a plane, reducing the segments, rotating it, though I could have also changed, uh, I believe it's called the orientation, yep. And now I'll make this editable so I can kind of just scale it down to size. Now for the size, I do want it to be a little bit wider than this because it is gonna kind of follow this to form along it. Um, and I wanna try my best to make this the, uh, the size it needs to be to fit. Otherwise it'll get squashed or stretched. So that looks pretty good. I'll move it a little ways in front um, so we can see some interesting things with the animation. Now what I'm gonna do is make the ribbon itself. I'm gonna go into uh, point mode, choose loop path, something around there, say 50% or so. Create two more vertically and switch to rectangle selection so I can scale these out. It's just a little bit quicker than adding the two points manually and, and moving them. Um, I'm then gonna weld these points here. And what this is gonna give me is just a little bit of an extra detail um, to my ribbon. Now I also want to go to loop path cut again to subdivide this a bit, okay? Whenever you're using a deformer, you need to have your geometry um, subdivided and ideally as equal as possible. So that way uh, it deforms as predictably and evenly as possible. But with the ribbon done, what I'm going to do is create the spline wrap deformer. It is right there, make it a child. It automatically fits the parent for us, which is great. And in the spline wrap, we can specify um, what spline we wanted to use. We'll use that one right there. And there we have it. We can see it on there. And if you've added the uh, correct amount of segments, really the only thing you might need to adjust would be the axis that it, the object was built on. My object was built on the X axis. So if yours was built on the Y or the Z, that's what you can change here. Um, and then you may need to reorientate it, okay? And you can do that either using a rail uh, or the banking property, but we'll come back to that here in a second. Um, what I want to do now is add some more edges to this so that it subdivides smoothly. So back into edge mode I go, maybe even polygon, and I'll select all of them, all my polygons, not that I, I think I need to, um, but then I'll choose subdivide from the mesh and add menu. And four, actually we'll bump that up to five, and there we go. So that's pretty even, it gets a little bit kind of different in the, the corners there, but I think we'll be just fine. And there you have it, there's our ribbon. So let's talk animation now, okay? Um, we can use the strength property, so kind of a before, after. So if we had the camera, you know, positioned kind of close to this, we could maybe have it come into view. You can also use offset, okay? You can see how that's just kind of moving it along it. Now it does kind of follow the angle of the last point, handle as well, so keep that in mind. And then we also have from in two. This just kind of scales this out, right? Notice how the polygons get closer together. Uh, but if you were to set this at 50 and 50, you can now animate this. And just to do that really quickly, see what it looks like. It'll be a bit fast, but still could get the idea. Now, uh, you may need to do a little something there to get rid of that. Okay, um, I would use the display tag. I do have a video about that. So 
check that out. Um, and yeah, really, you know, that's kind of the basics. Now, taking this further, we do have our rail spline. Now, since this is a simple spline, this isn't as big of a deal, but for more complex splines, uh, your geometry may not know kind of which way is up, which way to orientate itself. And a rail spline can help. So think of uh, the rail spline like the second track uh, of a train track, okay? So I'm gonna create another spline. This one can be rail, move it up, and drag that into a rail property. And notice how nothing changed because if this was a train sitting on the track, this is kind of the way it would face. However, if I start moving the rail or even the original spline for that matter, notice how it tries to kind of um, sit across both of these. So for more complex shapes, this can be useful, okay? I don't need it for right now. And plus you can also use banking or simpler things like this if you need to rotate it, okay? Now we also have our different modes here. So we have fit spline and keep length. Fit spline is gonna fit our um, the object to the spline where it's keep length. Well, well, keep its original length. So if this was much shorter, it would not stretch it out across the whole length. And so that's why I wanted to try and get this as close as possible. And you can see I did a pretty good job. So it's not really making a big difference which one I use, uh, and it's not squashing or stretching this to fit significantly either. Now we also have the size and rotation graphs, which allow us to control the size and rotation along the spline, where zero is the beginning of the spline, one is the end, and then size, think of it like scale, one is the default and zero is obviously zero. So you can see we can almost make a flag using this method as well. And these graphs work very much like the timeline. You can you know, work with the handles, you can add points by holding control and clicking on the line. And not that we'd wanna do it for this or say a flag, but you can add some interesting shapes here and for maybe something like um, a tree branch, allow us to get some more interesting organic we have something similar for rotation, right? So not only do we have baking, banking, like I said, to kind of rotate this, but we also have rotation. So we can get this to twist. That can be very helpful um, as well for once again, different types of objects, um, not so much a ribbon. And that is a lot of the spline wrap. Now, what I also want to do is talk about um, some other uses for it and some things to avoid with it. So first of all, one of the other great things about this is as this is a spline, um, we can come in here and change the shape of this at any point. So if I get feedback saying, you know, oh, it'd be nice if this could come out a little bit, um, adjust the shape, not so much like that, but cover right side, or maybe these, you know, move up a little bit as well. Notice how that's changing the rotation. And that's where the banking um, working with that can can help, right? Kind of. Um, get us back to where we want to be. But that's the flexibility that using a spline wrap a former on a piece of geometry like this has. We can edit the shape of it very quickly and easily. And that underlying shape is due to the spline. So really, really helpful. Now, um, where this isn't always useful is say with text. Okay, so if I create just some 3D text and I'll make it just a bit smaller, all right? Um, let's change what it's saying. So I will type in ribbon, ideally without the weird caps. You know, that would be fun. And I'll choose a font, right? Perfect. So if I do the same thing, I probably should have just kept that spline wrap to former. Spline wrap, make it a child of the spline. Well, you can see a couple of things. One, you know, it's all distorted. Okay, and it's trying to fit it as well. So um, the banking is something I would need to adjust and maybe even the mode, right? Keep length. But notice how things are bending, things are distorting, things are breaking as well as intersecting. So text, not always the, the best choice here. Now, part of that is the fact that these points aren't perfectly flat like I had them initially. While this may, Screw things up. Let's do this. Let's do hard interpolation. Zero these out. And then do soft interpolation. Okay. Probably get rid of the banking now. Awesome. 
But yeah, we still see the breaking. We still see the intersecting. Now, there are definitely things you can do to help with this. So just like with the ribbon, um, we wanted to add more segments so it would def deform correctly. The same is true for text. Really what we want to do um, is go into the cap section, switch it from NGON to either quadrangles or regular grid. You can see that's going to help a lot with the breaking there. But looking at this, it's still not quite perfect. And it is going to distort the text as it moves across. Okay, there's just really no getting around that. So, um, you know, another kind of common use I've seen is if you have a circle, right? You want to put some text on the circle, okay, which isn't a bad thought. So let's choose the circle now. And I'll do the breaking. Negative 90, take that to negative. There we go. And you can hopefully now get a little bit more of a sense of what I'm talking about with the text distorting. Um, you know, look, you see those two letters, the Bs, they look very different. You know, it's getting kind of tapered at the bottom, stretched at the top. Um, and yeah, you can, you know, change the size of the text, but you know, at some point, uh, this is going to break, you know, one way or another. So this can work, but you're still seeing a little bit of that um, distortion. Now, the way to fix this would be um, to use an align to spline tag and separate the letters, or worst case scenario, maybe even do the same thing with the text where you separate the letters individually and put a spline wrap on each one. But that makes this even harder since now, you know, you, You'll have multiple spline wraps and working with the offsets can be trickier since you have multiple, okay? So want to point that out that, yeah, while this is nice, this may not always be the best thing to do if you don't want your object to get deformed too much. Something like a ribbon, that's perfect. That's exactly what we wanted to do, okay? Um, other things like text, maybe not so much. All right, and with that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and end the video. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, if there's anything else you want to see, uh, and take care.